how's it going? So, um, got a new camera. It's actually the Hero 9 Black. This one has a screen on the front of it, so you can actually see what you're filming, which is kind of neat. I don't necessarily care about that, but the reason I bring this up is there's a lot of stuff I do on a daily basis that I don't film, just because I'm constantly running around doing stuff, visiting people's places, fixing broken stuff, just all kinds of random things. But carrying around this giant camera is not exactly practical, and you know, it takes a little bit of setup and all that stuff. So this thing was sent to me. I didn't have to pay for it, which was nice. It's not like a paid advertisement or anything like that. But what I'm hoping with this is I'm able to always have it with me and be able to capture a lot better video and audio just with a lot of the incidental stuff that I do on a day-to-day -day basis. Because I think some of it might be kind of interesting and you know, sometimes just hanging out with people or whatnot. So the video today is pretty much entirely comprised of that sort of footage. I'm just running around doing assorted things that I typically do and some of it may look like it's kind of fly on the wall type of thing. The camera is sitting in my lap and basically just looking up my nose or into the sky. But I think some of the conversations uh, were the interesting part, at least I thought so. Oh, and also just as a point of reference, anytime you get a new camera, it takes a little bit of screwing around to get the settings and stuff tuned just right. So I know people don't like it when I make excuses for video quality. It's fine, I'm not doing that. I'm just saying there's some scenes that may be a little bit dark and that's because I'm still learning all the settings and everything. You can't just take this out of the box and use it for what I use. It takes some trial and error. But anyhow, here you go. Uh, there's a couple days of random stuff smashed together. I do have some more footage left over as well, so we're gonna be getting another video here in the next day or two. My hope is with this is on the back end, it helps out with the editing quite a bit because it handles some of the audio and color correction and things like that automatically. There's some specific uh, things they've done with these cameras now that help out people that do vlogging like I do. So hopefully it will result in more content and less work for me editing. Anyways, hope you enjoy. All right, today lots of stuff going on as per usual. Gotta run over to the mailbox, grab some packages, head over to a friend's place to drop off some supplies that he needs. And then also, another friend, uh, his conversion wheelchair van is leaking gasoline. So uh, usually the filler necks on those things are the problem. So we're gonna stop by there since it's on the way and uh, see if we can figure out what's going on. Yeah, yeah, it looks like it might be a return line or something. Looks like it's kind of leaking from right there. And it's not dripping while it's sitting here. If it was the filler neck, well, it looks like the filler neck goes on the, on the top. So that may not be the issue. Okay, turn the key off and then turn it back to run, but don't start it. Yeah. Okay, do that again. And then back on. Okay, that's good, you can stop. I see leaking. Yeah, so there's a little fountain coming out. Oh, God. Luckily, that's really easy to get to. You don't even have to jack the thing up. Like, I mean, if I had the parts to do that, I could just throw myself on the ground and reach that. It's just like right there. Pop the hood. Yeah, if you pop the hood real quick, I can relieve oh. the pressure from the system. Oh my god, really? yeah, yeah. Sweet. Because all the pressure was out of the lines and no it was repriming, and then when it started priming, it started leaking everywhere. Right. I may not be able to reach the Schrader valve on this. I thought there was a chance I might be able to, so. Hmm. Yeah, you just got a little trickle coming out the back there for a few minutes until the pressure subsides. It's it could be as simple as unclipping that thing and clipping it back on or like replacing an o-ring that's in there okay. um, Let me uh, let me get down there with my phone. I think I can reach it and take a picture to show mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't drive it. It wasn't even running and we were getting a nice spray out of there. Yeah, so gonna... for like two minutes <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we didn't solve the problem, but at least we figured out what's going on and um, I got some photos of the issue so they're mechanic should be able to look at them and get the thing taken care of. By the way, yes, Joe, I did film some of this. <laughs> Now's the point where I'd say next stop is the mailbox place, but I already went there earlier and I picked up the package. I even know what it is because the person told me what it was that they sent me. So uh, yeah, let's head back and, uh, well, 
I know it's coffee, but I don't know what kind. So we'll head back and check that out. By the way, I'm not sure if the camera picked up any of the audio, but what was going on with the van is the fuel return line from the engine, the connector that goes into the little plate that goes onto the fuel cell or the fuel tank on the back of the van. The O-ring connection or the little connector there, I don't know if it broke or it just dried out or something, but basically we're getting a little spray of fuel out of that little plastic connector that the return line for the fuel from the engine goes through. So it's not full pressure, but it's still gonna be at least like 25, 30 PSI. And also the van was hard to start. So because the fuel was leaking out, it wasn't until we cycled the key a few times that the fuel got all the way through the system into the injector rails and then all the way back down to the return line and then started spraying out. So it's in a spot that's not too hard to get to. So you don't even really have to jack the thing up. You can just kind of lay down underneath it. So I think they've got someone that should be able to uh, get it taken care of. Worst case scenario, that entire line might have to be replaced. Some of the vans, they have hard lines that go back from the engine and then there's just a little short flexible piece. But other vans, that line might be 15 feet long. So either way, at least we know what the problem is. And also that van does do a lot of sitting around. And when those O-rings dry out, uh, a lot of times when fuel hits them again after not being used for a few months, they can start leaking. So kind of makes sense. Older van does a lot of sitting around and stuff. Oh man, it's getting cold out here. So they figured out what the problem was. They had someone come over and take a look at it. And it turns out the little hard line that comes out of the fuel pump carriage assembly, the pressure line and the return line goes back in there as well as a vent. And that little piece of metal tubing that came out ended up with a little pinhole in it. Sometimes the uh, the little like pinch welds as they are uh, will get a little hole in them and then fuel will come spraying out of there. So they just wound up replacing the entire fuel pump and they were able to do it without dropping the fuel tank or even jacking the thing up in the air. So uh, pretty easy fix. I don't think fuel pumps cost more than like, well on that one, I'm sure it wasn't $150 if even that. So yeah, they're back on the road now with that van and uh, I guess we move on to the next thing. All right, uh, kind of an odd one. I need to go to the store and get a shower curtain rod and a shower curtain liner, but I hate going to the store by myself. And a friend just called, apparently his car broke down over on the other side of town here. And uh, they're going out there to pick it up with a tow dolly and a trailer. And they're also going into this one particular store that happens to sell the things I need. So it works out. I get to help them screwing around with the car. And also I get someone to go with me into the store because in this day and age, going to the store by yourself in a wheelchair is a subpar experience. But yeah, anyways, headed over there now. And there's nothing like a little bit of rush hour traffic, even though it's 6 p.m. Or a little bit after. This has been one of those days though that is pretty much all paperwork, emails, and phone calls. Dealing with lawyers, cell phone carriers, all kinds of stuff. Um, so I switched cell providers and the phone number that I've had for the last 16 years, apparently they're having trouble porting it. And right now I can't receive any phone calls or text messages. So that's a little bit annoying. They're trying to get it taken care of. They said it's gonna be another week apparently. It's already been three days now. But uh, yeah, I'm starting to think uh, I might just have to let the old phone number go and get a new one. Um, I suppose it's good to do that every so often. I don't know. Dude, seriously, I've forgotten how crusty everything is in East County. Um, yeah, I would like to not come back to this part of town anytime soon. There they are. The car, the car is up on jack stands. <laughs> I guess when it's time for side of the road repairs, uh, we bring all the tools. It's never bad. <laughs> it's another day. Nothing to see here. <laughs> is Danny inside? Yeah. <laughs> I like, so I just like pull into like the first spot here and the car is like dragging. And this, this bolt was sticking out of the caliper and like can openering the wheels. Oh. And so I like, I did could, it just back out or what? Well, I looked at, I, so I, at first I thought maybe it was just somebody else's bolt, you know, cause I yeah. couldn't tell. I was like, Oh, it was just like stuck. What in, is that bolt even? 
do? Yeah, so I was like, uh, and so I like took it out, put the wheel back on, and I was like, eh, and drove it back around, and it's still making a whamming noise. And what so even is this? It, it holds the front torque arm on. So oh, this isn't the front? Yeah. Oh. And so, it, so there's there's the front torque arm. This is a three link. Oh, okay. And that front torque arm goes up and there's a little clamp. I went and got Danny's toe dolly, but he's like, we should just like <laughs> bring a jack and like. He's See like, if he can get it going. He's like, if, it, if there's a bolt we can put back in, it'd be easier to drive the car back than take it on the dump dolly. Yeah, so, serious, especially this thing. Anyway, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so anyways, I, I'm currently trying to fish <laughs> this into it. So I like, I wasn't sure. So I just crawled into there just right before you got here. Nice. And I found out so I can see where it goes. I, I don't think the threads are too bunged up. I brought yeah. a few extra bolts or some Allen bolts. I've got... It's like something happened there, but it should be able to ram it in there. Like some... Nice to see ya. Oh yeah. How goes the festivities? Good. Bolt removal and or reinstallation or something. Yeah. <laughs> Facial, I know, isn't this high fashion? I am. Um, <laughs> the one that I wear at work is a 3M facial oh, that yeah. folds up and down. It's either this or a full grinding hood. The, that, that's what mine is. The only thing I don't like it is it's heavy and it kind of leaves this mark around my head. Yeah. Or it's heavier, but that one looks pretty comfy. Is that okay? Yeah, it seems to work. Comfier? <laughs> yeah. I can hear myself talking really well. I know. I know. That's just great. You have this echo. Oh, where would shower curtain rods be? Shower curtain rods. 20? 20 or 21. Down there ways? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll be right back. Cool. Actually, I have to use some of these. What the heck? Just turned off. That'll do. <clears throat> How's it coming out here? Good. Sweet. We got the bolt and that's one of those ridiculous like, hard spots to access. Yeah, even with ratcheting and wrenches? Yep. Fun. Would jacking something up help at all or not really? Yeah, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Take it easy, it. Got it in there? No, it's like halfway in. I <laughs> take it's a like, break. <laughs> <laughs> like this is about as fast as it goes. Uh, and your hand cramps up. <laughs> it's at each click, that's like not much. Yeah, I don't know. I mean jacking up the front would help. I just yeah, it's hard. It's a hard angle to <laughs> Do anything to do anything i don't think i can fit a socket in there it's like up in the tunnel and there's three like some like two oh is it in the center part yeah it's, oh okay it's, this is that torque arm yeah, yeah and so there's the three link there's the two bars that go on the bottom and there's one big bar that mounts up by the transmission and it's kind of just a, a pivot so it's just like this like a little oh, thing gotcha. that like, goes into this little rubber yeah. And there's a little bolt on the very top, up, oh. up in the transmission tunnel. <laughs> okay. And there's fuel lines in the way. <laughs> yeah. So, but it's it's in there, I think. And that was probably the rattling, you think? Yeah, this is for sure. Because that, that torque arm, without that, had flopped open. That torque arm, when you'd accelerate, the whole axle would pick that up and oh. it would just wham. That whole torque arm wasn't captive anymore. So it was just and so it's, around and so it's going with the rear axle. And so when the rear axle goes up, that whams into the... <laughs> tunnel otherwise it whams straight back down yeah. so i so it's just like clamped in there and a bolt on the top so we're we're and the brakes and everything are fine right yeah yeah exactly yeah so it's cool. still the car is still like it drives so it, it it's drives. just beating on itself so it was one of those things i wasn't sure what it was did you find out what it is yeah it's a torque arm he's bolt. putting the bolt back in now those have fallen out so many times we always discuss tying those off if there's one bolt that would be good <laughs> Well, it's, it's going like one sixteenth of a turn at a time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, I like so I like just drive into a parking spot here and yeah, I don't know. The oh. bolt bounced out, hit the ground and the logs itself in the brakes for safekeeping. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was like looking under there and I like, could, would the nut under there? 
I looked under the backside there. No, there's no nut on the backside, it just threads into a threaded thing. Oh. And so the bolt just came unscrewed, and so the bolt was just like sitting <laughs> in, like, in the caliper out, like rubbing on the wheel. And so I looked under there and I saw the bolt, and so I took the wheel off with the, with the little teeny jack, put it back together, and then when I went to accelerate, it still goes wham, and the torque rod is just hitting the underside of the tunnel. Uh. So. But, so sort of lucky, I guess. Yeah. Well, the, the bolt still though, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, that it caught. That yeah, caught that's it. the hard thing. <laughs> Otherwise, we'd have to do something different. So got it in there. No, Dan. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Dan, Dan, Dan. <laughs> got it in here. I'm just drawing a picture. This is the third shift. <laughs> Dan, Dan. I'm on a break. We're eight thirty seconds completed. I'm not going to ask if the bolt is in, but I just had to notice that you're using the jack right now. Yeah, bolt's in. <laughs> we're, we're tight. All I could torque it was, was the, that much. <laughs> that's, that's the amount of torque. Do you have it on a ratcheting thing? Yeah. What do they say? A uh, cross thread's a strong thread? Yeah. If the if the threads are messed up, that'll count as thread locker. Are you at work now still doing it? <laughs> or is this lunch break? Yeah. <laughs> Work is for sucks. <laughs> I'm working. I'm on a Zoom call. Jimmy, why is that? Why are you just a picture on it's a, the wall? It's a green screen. <laughs> just here. Oh. oh, wait, they're making waves? Yeah. Because oh. it has to process. They said you can call back at any time. 2,700 yeah. people? Yeah. Well, at least we get to uh, drag this thing all the way back. Yeah, that's right. Which is already going to be a lot better than dragging it back with this car on it. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, yeah dragging it right. back as is versus that. The Trans Am will be, will can you the even, not riding on that. Can you even get it up on here with this, or would you have to use the jack? Because the front of the car Jesus, is so low. Maybe we've done it before, but I, I, I toe-dollied this back. I lost a fuel pump when I was down by the like, Ross Island Bridge. Was it one of the U-Haul ones you got it on there? I, it might have been Danny's. I don't... I guess this has the awesome bigger tires, maybe. <laughs> why is it, why, how can you think they're bigger, Dan? This pot, I'm, do you have a plug-in, Jimmy? <laughs> yeah, it's up underneath right here. Did the adapter make its way back in there? Well, I guess the front of this isn't as bad as the white Camaro was. Uh, it I mean, it doesn't matter. I could, I mean, I, we could, if you take the Trans Am to my house, uh -huh. and then I'll drop you off with this, and you can keep your, yeah. <laughs> Did you I like this. I'll take no. it. All your vehicles have hitches now, right? I have one vehicle Not with hitch. <laughs> yeah, the caddy's uh, missing hitch. Oh, the caddy would probably tow better than the Hummer because it's got the gumbo. The Hummer tow is good, except for it doesn't have a granny first gear. So, like, starting out with a 3,000 pound boat going up a hill. It, oh, is it a manual? Yeah. Oh, that's a hard one to find. It is a very hard one to find. There's a McDonald's a half a mile down there. Yeah, I think we just sit in the drive thru and then we'd all sit in our. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> we'd probably just bail, I guess. <laughs> Coronavirus. Oh yeah, I keep ruining, <laughs> ruining anything fun. I keep forgetting you're not allowed to Since eat food inside buildings March. anymore. <laughs> um, yeah, let's just. You probably let us party out. Cool. Let's, let's just leave. I got my shower curtain rod, so I'm good. We'll do this tomorrow night. I just hate going to the store by myself. So anytime I can go inside a building with someone else, oh yeah, like, it works better. <laughs> well, that sounds good. Well, anytime um, I want to go to a store. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now what is the most direct route to get out of this part of town is the question. Well, that was an interesting one. He definitely got lucky about not losing that bolt. It bounced off the ground and lodged itself into the brake caliper. How does that even work? <laughs> and yes, Mexican food. Okay. All right, thanks a lot. You too. Okay, I think we got all the stuff we needed. Man, I sure do carry around a lot of stuff on my lap. So we've got shower curtain rod, shower curtain, all the rings, backpack, and priorities. It's time to eat some food. Food I can put down here. I've realized I've lived in this house a year and I haven't really unpacked or anything yet. And I don't really use a dresser for clothes, so I got some more hangers. I think the plan is to just use the closet, closing the blinds here, and uh, just hang all my shirts up in there since I can get into that thing pretty easily. But yeah, um, food. And then you're going to install a proper shower curtain, what I've been using in the meanwhile 
well, I'll have to show you. It's not exactly the best thing in the world. All right, so the existing shower curtain that I have is actually one of these cloth things that's designed to have a liner inside of it. And I just use extra long zip ties and sort of hooked him over this thing. But the problem is it's long enough that it hits the bottom of the bathtub. So it winds up constantly being soaked with water and it gets stuck underneath the chair that I use in here. So I think we're gonna rip all this down and then put the shower curtain up here. Uh, the F3 is in there and it's got a seat elevator. So I think that'll work good for this. Yeah, so here you can see it just sort of lays on the bottom of the tub and it never really dries out all the way. Plus you're supposed to have a plastic liner in front of this so it doesn't get soaked, but yeah. Oh, I forgot. The F3 is partially taken apart. I was taking some photos of the ICS box for someone that was trying to get uh, some light wiring down to the front covers off of it. Also, <laughs> the backrest is still not on here where it goes, so I have to do a little bit of reassembly on this thing, and then I think we should be good. I'm gonna do that, then I'll be back. All right, we're in the F3 now. This thing's been doing a lot of sitting around. The uh, batteries need charging. Charged them up a few weeks ago, I think. Although maybe that's been about a month ago now. Okay, now for the fun part. Seat elevator engage. Oh man, this thing's tall. <laughs> okay, now we can just cut these. Ugh. This might require both hands, hang on. Okay, that's been removed now. I guess I did not grab the shower curtain rod though, so, whoa. <laughs> so let's go do that. Wait, come on chair. I know your battery's low, but work with me. That's the other thing too, when your batteries are cold and they're getting a bit low. Wow, I am a long way off the ground right now. This is a weird perspective being this tall. Look, I can touch the light fixtures. <laughs> um, yeah, when your batteries get low, things tend to respond a little bit differently and the brakes don't work quite the same. And being elevated way up off the ground, I'm sure doesn't help. So this, oh, that's still kind of a reach. Should be able to make it work though. It's gonna go up here. I'm just gonna do it instead of trying to hold the camera because ah, I just want to get it done. Okay, let's see here. How does this thing work? I think you rotate, let's see, there's a sticker. Extend, twist to lock, pull back, adding tension. This is definitely work for an able-bodied person. And I know you're probably thinking, hey, um, you should have slid those shower curtain rings on before you put the bar up. But as it turns out, these things don't fit over the end of the bar. Why are these so hard to open? Now for the fun part. Installing this and the shower curtain liner on there at the same time. I feel like I should probably turn off my chair for this or I'm gonna accidentally hit the joystick. <laughs> Okay, I got one of them attached and I am exhausted. The seat lift on the bounder does go a little bit taller, which might make this easier. But, um, maybe I should just go get the bounder. At this rate, I'm only be able to do one of these about every five minutes. <laughs> um, I'll be back. Oh look, it hung itself. There is one thing that someone I know has always said. If there's someone else that can do something for you that has better hands and arms, definitely have them do it. Because, uh, yeah, that was a lot easier. <laughs> like all shower curtains though, it has this one thing right here that kind of 
interferes with these sliding, so I might have to put some electrical tape on that or some aluminum tape or something, but yeah, I mean, now it's like I'm living in an actual place that's like slowly coming together. Now I just have to finish unpacking. Eh. Maybe I should probably get a dresser to put my clothes in too. I've just, I've moved so much over previous years that I like, I just, <clears throat> man, why are all these chairs giving me so much trouble? It's just kind of like, why bother unpacking? Because you're going to leave again. But this time, <laughs> that is not the case. I've been here over a year now, and I'm pretty sure I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. Because this place is mine. <laughs>